the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this Monday, Thursday. My name's Claire, I'm the vicar at St Chad's Church in Rubri, and I would really like to share a few thoughts as we begin the Triduum, the three most holy days of the church's calendar. Normally we would be gathering today to break bread, but also to wash one another's feet, as Jesus did the night before he died. The disciples were with him in the upper room. The meal was being served. Maybe there was a strange atmosphere in the room. Fear? Anticipation? Anxiety? But Jesus gets up, ties a towel round his waist and kneels to wash his friend's feet. Simon Peter starts asking questions. No, you can't wash my feet. But that is exactly what Jesus did. And once he was finished, he said, You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am very sad that we cannot meet to wash one another's feet today. And at St Chad's, that's precisely what we would normally do. We don't have one person washing everybody's feet. We wash one another's feet. I happen to be tidying up my office. It doesn't happen very often. And I came across this pile of towels, carefully washed and folded from last year. They will remain washed and folded this year. But they got me thinking. Jesus knelt to serve and bless his friends. He blessed them and even though they weren't quite sure how to receive that blessing, Jesus called them to bless one another in the same way. There is something about this action of washing one another's feet that requires us to receive from as much as to give to one another. We can't simply wash our own feet. We can't simply serve ourselves. In living out the blessing we receive from God, in fact, to fully receive God's blessing so generously and abundantly poured out, we too are called to share it, to bless others, to serve others. There is an interdependence here. Our ability to receive blessing is directly connected to the extent to which we are able to bless others. I happened to hear the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, on the television the other week, speaking about what we might learn or come to notice during this strange time, this time of global pandemic. And he said this. The real question posed to us here is this. What does it really mean to live in a safe society, a society where vulnerable people are secure? He went on. How important is it to us that we protect not only ourselves but others? Primarily, of course, the people we most care about. But with an infection like this, we can't draw boundaries. The welfare of the people we most care about is bound up with the welfare of those that they are close to. It's really genuinely a shared challenge. And when we've got that kind of shared challenge, that poses one of the biggest moral questions to us. Do I understand that my well-being is completely bound up in the well-being of all my fellow human beings? Do I understand that my well-being 
is completely bound up in the well-being of all my fellow human beings. It's a question I hope we don't just sit with now, but that we carry forward as we move through this crisis and out the other side. What might we learn about our interdependence during this lockdown? How might we take forward what we learn into the future? How might what we learn bless those around us, both those who we call and know to be our neighbours and those who live on the other side of the world? Will we come to understand that our well-being is completely bound up in the well-being of all our fellow human beings. I wonder if perhaps the first steps are to understand that we're not self-sufficient, that we all need others in different ways and in different times, yes, but we are interdependent, connected, reliant, dependent on our fellow human beings. Today that might mean staying at home to protect others as much as ourselves, but what might it mean this time next year? How might it affect what we buy, who we talk to, who we choose to serve? Perhaps if we begin to ask those questions, we might begin to receive and share God's blessing in new ways over the coming weeks, over the coming months and years. I'm going to end with a poem that I read during my licensing five and a half years ago now here at St Chad's and I read it today as much to myself as I do to anyone else. It's by Professor Nicholas Lee. I do not stand alone but with others to support me I will stand my ground. I do not see the way, but with others to walk it with me, I can make a path. I do not possess the truth, but with others to witness to what they know, I will be able to discern what is right. I cannot master all skills, but with others who will lend their accomplishments, I can do enough. I cannot carry every burden but with others to share it, I may bear my own load. I cannot meet all needs, but with others to nourish and replenish me, I will be able to give enough. I do not have limitless free choice, but with others to consult, I will make my own choices gladly. I will not always be consistent, but with others to laugh with me, I will regain my equanimity. I am not invincible, but with others to reach out a hand, I may learn from my mistakes and start again. I cannot be perfect, but with others to make up the shortfall of my imperfections, I can be content to be good enough. So, as we begin this triduum, may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer and sustainer, wash over you and out to those on whom you defend, this day and always.